Hello. Okay, today we're gonna take a stereo pair. Uh, in this case, a, a stereo pair an MPO coming from a W W3 uh, Fuji camera, but it could be coming from any stereo pair, even like vintage uh, stereo realist slides that you scanned, whatever. So this is the MPO as is. You may want to uh, do an auto alignment. I didn't even bother. And this is uh, the gray anaglyph. So if you want, you can you can change the stereo window by using the left and left left right arrow keys. This will, be, this will basically determine what's in focus when you print your lentic lenticular. So here, the, the focus, I mean, the stereo window seems to be uh, on that first uh, column or whatever you want to call it. And of course, this is Stereo Photomaker. So then what I do is that I just save the left right image. I already did that, so I don't need to do it again okay so let's assume that you now have your left and right image what do you do now yes yeah, so this is runway ml i made a video about this very subject because what we're going to do is that we're not going to create depth maps and all that stuff we're just going to interpolate between the left and right image to get our sequence of images for lenticular printing so it's i think much easier and we're going to use frame interpolation. So as I said, I made a video about this. Not too long ago. This one. So I already, I already did it. So basically what you do is that you put... Uh, maybe I'll redo it. You put your left image and then your right image. Okay, clip duration. Just do one. One second, generate, okay, then you export, I already did that, but you export, so you uh, resolution, change to 720, and then you export, and it's going to tell you that uh, it, it's been added to your assets, so then you go to the assets and you download. I already did that, so... Okay, so let's assume I have the MP4. So to extract to extract the frames from the MP4, I use AVID Max. I'm sure there are other ways to do it, but that's the way I do it. I already did it, but I show you. I will show you again. So where is the? Okay, so this is what came out of Runway ML. This the MP4. And Basically, use the left-right arrow keys to go from one frame to the next. Okay, so here I just go through all the frames. I think there are like 30-something frames. So, uh, I'm going to use like 15 frames. So, every other frame. So, like here, this is the first frame, which corresponds to the, the left image. So, what you do is that you do fail, fi uh, file. You do file, save as image. JPEG is fine, and this is going to be the first one. I already did that. Then you go this one, same thing. Control E if you want to go faster, and this is going to be my second one, etc. etc. Until you get 15. I'm not going to do it, but that's the way you do it. So, okay, every other frame because 30, 30, 30, I think it was 30 frames total. It's probably too much for a 60 LPI. Yeah, so the lens I use is a 6x4 60 LPI. So, and I have a Epson, so it's a 720 PPI. So the minimum number of frames should be 12. So 15 is fine. Could do 16, doesn't matter. I think 30 is probably too much. Okay. So now you have all your frames. So now we're going to launch 
grape to get the interest image okay so this is grape so i already i've already done it so it's there's already a uh, what's it called a job file but let's say i don't have it so i'm going to do cancel so here you would put so i have an epson so it's 720 vertical same thing 720 measure pitch so i assume you have you have done already a, a pitch test so the pitch test depends on the the lens you are using the width millimeter so i'm using a six by four six, six inch by uh, four inch so it's 150 millimeter by 100 and let's say i just use the default let's just see what happens okay let's do that uh, no so open sequence folder and here it's a bit confusing because it says no items match your search doesn't matter uh, the views are there and the views should look like this should be like 0102030405 like that nothing else it could be also one two three four five to fifteen if you want or zero zero one zero zero two zero zero three but it's it has to be kind of like that zero one zero two zero three okay so those are the the views you're going to use in your sequence so that's fine select folder that's the right folder and it's doing the it's, it's stuff and now you can save the interest image I don't think I'm going to save it because I already did some stuff. So let's cancel. But basically what you would get, so you would open the interest image in the GIMP. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm a bit lost. Okay, so that would be that one. But here I'm using only two images, so don't get confused by it. But... Uh, Otherwise, the same thing. I just want to see the actual size. Millimeter. So the width is one, 155 point something. So that's not, that's not 150. And the height is 110. And that's not 100. Because he added those 5 millimeter. On, at the top and at the bottom so we need to change we need to change a bunch of things here so that so that the, whatever we print is 150 by 100 and not 155 by 110 okay so let's cancel here and I'll, I'm gonna redo it okay so I have to go back in the grape I have to redo it Okay, so let's let's just redo it from scratch. So again, 720. 720, because I have an Epson. 60.12. So that's my my stuff. Yours is gonna be different. Pictured width. So we had 150 and 100 and the rest was default. So here we need to change the picture width. I can leave it at 150 and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to change the alignment pattern position to internal so that they go on the inside not on the outside and the picture height this one you don't have a choice you have to put 90 okay so no so that's correct and it's going to create the interest image and I will not save it because I've already done it. Okay, so now let's go back to the GIMP. So let's look at the the print size now. In millimeters. So now you have 149.97, which is 150, and you have 100, which is so that's correct. So you have this margin, the top margin, and the bottom margin. And this is the five millimeter here. The, this one on the horizontal axis is a little bit trickier. So basically, the, this margin here, instead of going this way, 
going uh, going to the outside it was put towards the inside it works because uh, the actual image doesn't go all the way to the to the boundary so it's going to depend on your on your image so if i go back into grape like 720 okay so okay 150 95 and i put external uh, internal it depends so if you put internal it means that that the alignment thing is going to go towards your image so if you can't, you leave it as external, but you're going to have to reduce here. I think it's to 145 or, so, or 144. You, you have to play with this. But here it works because the expect ratio of the image is uh, 4, 4 by 3. And uh, the lens is 6 by 4, so it works. There's room. Okay, so now, so this is GIMP. How do I print in GIMP? Uh, okay, I'll show you. It's going to depend on your uh, printer. Image setting, you can have a look, make sure. So it's going to be resolution 7, 720 by 720, that's fine. And the the width is going to be about 150 and the height 100. Perfect. This, don't I don't really care. I don't think it matters. Then you go to general and the important thing, thing is going to the preferences. But this is the preferences for your printer. So it's going to depend on your printer. This is for uh, Epson. But what's important is the paper type. Uh, you, you, you want to use a very good quality photo paper. So here I'm, I'm using like uh, the best one. Ultra premium quality. Here I'm using the max quality. This doesn't matter. I'm... I'm, I'm Checking, in, checking the print preview just to be uh, sure of what I'm going to print and then you can go into more options just to make sure and the important one is here never, never do anything like this don't check this do not check it do not check it do not fit to page color correction, fine and here do not check high speed okay so then you can just print and I will show you what I have printed and then we're gonna align it align it to the lens. Uh, just a few words about those alignment things. It's 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 gonna be obvious when you put the thing uh, under the lens. But this is sent this is for centering the lenticular. For centering. And you also for aligning. And those also, those also are for aligning. This one and that one. So I think it's important to have both. Okay, so here is the, uh, the print. So it says 15 views. So that's how it looks like. Lo looks like. So, uh, so the width is 150, the height is 100. And this is my the lens which is a 6x4 or 150 by 100 and it's a 60 lpi so what you do is that you put the lens on top as best as you can and what you want to do is to make sure that it's aligned so you want this line to be continuous you see that black line you want that to be continuous that means you're aligned and same thing on the other side so you may have to tilt your head to see that thing that that black line horizontal uh, vertical line the black vertical line it's hard with the camera but and what you want to do here here and here you want to make sure that the the black vertical line is centered so i'm going to try to do it and you use one eye use one eye above the two marks okay so here here i'm pretty much aligned okay so here 
the black the black line is in the middle I mean not quite and same thing here so I'm not completely let me try it's hard with the gloves I mean it's not perfect but you get the idea the black line is in the middle the black line is in the middle not quite but you get the idea it should be right in the middle here if you look on the right the, you will see a black line that black line must be vertical perfectly vertical same thing on the other side there's another one here you see the black line it has to be perfectly vertical so when you have that that's it you're aligned so now you just have to uh, uh, basically glue glue the paper to the lens and you have your lenticular and that's all there is to it please like comment subscribe and i will make more